Hello. To Aloha at home. Welcome back. Hello. My name is Jamie Tworkowski. I am the founder of To Write Love on Her Arms. Happy to be back with you. Honored to be representing our team spread out mostly in Florida, but a few other states as well, working from home. I always like to shout out our friend Ruthie, who is holding down the fort at our warehouse, shipping out online store orders day after day. Thank you, Ruthie. There's a bunch of people here already, and that may have something to do with our second guest. We've got two great guests for you this afternoon. Uh, many of you are here for Ali Krieger, and we also have Levi the Poet, a friend of mine who will be joining us from New Mexico. So we'll spend about 25 minutes with Levi, and then we will switch over, and Ali will be joining us, but already grateful in advance to both of these two friends of the organization. Before we bring on Levi, just wanted to share a couple announcements. Uh, last Saturday was our eighth annual Run For It 5K. We wondered if we might have to cancel the event altogether. We obviously had to cancel the physical gathering in Florida, but we were able to still offer a virtual aspect uh, that people could run or walk, participate, no matter where they are in the United States, in the world. And I am proud to report that we had more than 4,000 people participate we raised more than $100,000 for the organization. So we thought it might not happen at all. And instead it turned out to be the biggest run for it 5K we've ever had. So thank you. If any of you are watching and you participated, uh, we would love to see a comment from you. One thing I, I love to always ask is uh, if you wanna share where you are, uh, where you are in the world, it's it's really cool it's really special to see where people tune in from and it's not just a conversation for the guests and myself but we love hearing from you if you have a question throughout the next hour please feel free to submit your question there's a little question mark icon at the bottom of your screen so if you have a question for levi for ali uh, for myself about the organization we would love to get to a few of those questions. So thank you to everyone who ran, walked, pushed a wheelchair, pushed a stroller. Thank you to everyone who fundraised. Thank you to everyone who donated. Uh, it was just such a special event and we were so incredibly pleasantly surprised by the turnout and the response and ultimately the participation. So cool seeing where you guys are. Miami, Florida, Green Bay, Kansas, New York, Toronto. Thank you for showing up. We continue to do these Twiloha at home Instagram lives because we want to show up for you. Our events, like pretty much everyone else's events, have been canceled, they've been postponed. So no concerts, no uh, music festivals, no college speaking events, no high school speaking events. And we're thankful that we can still use technology, we can still use social media to connect with people. And again, for me being here on behalf of our team, it's super special. So thank you for allowing us to show up and thank you for showing up as well. Uh, a couple more announcements. Our next to Aloha at Home will be next Tuesday, which is the 26th, 26th of May. Uh, my friend Chad Moses from our team will be hosting and our special guest will be Justin Furstenfeld uh, from Blue October. And so Chad and Justin are longtime friends. They will be having a conversation. Blue October has, uh, or I'm sorry, Justin has a documentary coming out called Get Back Up uh, about his journey through addiction and sobriety. And I'm excited to watch and listen as Chad and Justin reconnect. And we're excited to be able to share that conversation with you. Uh, and then I'll be actually participating in two other uh, live chats on Thursday, the 27th, or sorry, sorry, Wednesday, the 27th. I will be going live on the Mighty uh, on their Facebook Live at 4 p.m. Eastern. So that's next Wednesday, May 27th, 4 p.m. Eastern with the Mighty. And then I 
am lucky enough to take over the Skull Candy Instagram account, and I will be going live uh, interviewing another nonprofit founder, Jeremy Jones, and that will be at 7 p.m. Eastern, again, on the Skull Candy Instagram. And so they have become great friends, uh, a great partner to us. We are in the middle of our, or I guess we're early in our Mood Boost campaign partnership. So we are grateful for them. And I was honored to get the invite to do an Instagram Live on their platform. We have new coloring book pages on the Fear Won't Win landing page. Those have been a hit. So we are glad to share some new ones with you. We love seeing when you uh, color those in and get creative and share them. There's a new podcast with Renee Yoey. Uh, it's our Hope Remains podcast that is out now. And our next podcast will be dropping on Tuesday. And that is with our friend Levi the Poet, who you are about to meet. That's it for announcements. Again, if you have questions, take advantage of that question mark box. I'm gonna bring on Levi, spend some time with him, and then we will switch over to Ali Krieger. Thank you guys for being here. Levi's coming on. Gracie is barking. Hey, my man. What's up, man? How's it going? It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, I'm turning you up a little bit. All right. Is your dog better behaved than my dog? Oh, sometimes. Here, you need to see the dog? Hold please. Yeah. All right. Let's get the dog in here. It's not just me. Other people may want yeah, to see the dog. Yeah, I know. Nice little... What is Francis. the dog's name? Francis. Yes. Yeah. That's so... Look Thank at you. Francis. It hey. is... Look, you're live. Buddy. He's Francis is awesome. Yeah, man. He's a good dog. Brandy got him for me as a surprise anniversary present just a little bit over a year ago. And that, that is such a bold is, gift. It is such a cool gift. I know. I know. We, we talked about it for a while and uh yeah all of a sudden i i got this letter from her that said hey i i i got you a dog we were like driving to somewhere i didn't know and then we turned into this lady's place and all of a sudden i get to choose from all these puppies so it was beautiful no way. yeah i loved it um well man thank you for taking some time thank you yeah. for doing this thank you for wearing that t-shirt <laughs> yeah you have to it's good um so we'll just We'll just jump right in, man. How it's obviously we're doing these because it's such a strange, hard season yeah. that we continue to find ourselves in. And I love just asking each each guest, just first off, just checking in. How are you? What has life been looking like? But also specifically as it relates to mental health and, and your self-care, what has this now extended season been looking and feeling like? Yeah. Um, thanks. I, you know, I, it's interesting, I think for, and I know we just discussed this before, but it, it's interesting with folks who like me are, are kind of already in a work from home uh, circumstance. Like there's a degree to which I, I see a lot of people posting about like being kind to yourself and gentle and taking a break and and there and and then i and then i at times feel like oh man i'm just i'm like going harder or working more than ever almost you know and uh and and there's, there's like a weird kind of um is this right is this wrong i don't know there, there, i i end up going back and forth in my mind about anything and everything that included but uh you know i i am i am i feel privileged to be able to continue to to be creative and and i i have been plugging away at things and some of them in some ways it's been really exciting because they've been ideas that I've had for a really long time. And it's like, well, there's no other distraction right now. So why not shoot for the moon on some of that stuff, you know? So, but my, but it is different. I mean, obviously it's, everything's different, you know? Yeah. Um, but my wife, Brandy and I are at home in Albuquerque and um, you know, they've loosened things up a little bit. So we're like seeing a little bit of people, um and that's been really good for my heart i'm really extroverted and i try to do things like this often with people or zooming along with the rest of the world so um yeah man i 
helps to have the dog to go on walks with. I do that every morning and started that during this quarantine. I'll go out for quite a while and that's been really good for my mental health. And um, I'm glad for those things. Yeah. Are there any, it sounds like you haven't had as steep of a learning curve as maybe other people in terms of adjusting to this yeah. time, but uh, kind of along the lines of a walk or taking breaks, are there any rhythms that have kind of surprised you that have felt good or just things you've been maybe learning or experiencing in this time? Yeah, I mean, certainly those things have been really good for me. Um, my wife's a, a CrossFit coach and she's a, a lot more active uh, than I tend to be. And so I've been trying to, to, <laughs> to uh, <laughs> be more active with her. And, and that's been nice. I think, um, I think that I have been trying to, remember that not everybody especially I think within my sphere of influence and maybe because of some of the similar kinds of things that you and I have spent a lot of our lives talking about I'm I'm sort of like hyper aware of the folks who are following my world and and really wanting to be attentive to them so I think in terms of practice I've I've tried really hard to pour into um, you know, like I, I've got a Patreon community, like every other artist, you know, and I've, I've like tried to, I've tried to do things that like, we'll do like movie nights and we'll do, we'll, we'll do like virtual co-working streams so that people can just feel like they're not just by them. I mean, they're, they're, we're all alone together inside of this like world. And so that's been good. And, and, and I've been a lot, I've been able to be a lot more organized in, in life, I think, which has helped me not feel so insane too, and, and, and organize things in such a way that I can, I hope, bring some sense of peace or togetherness to the folks who are paying attention to what I'm trying to do, you know? Do you mean, do you feel like you've been more organized? Yeah, in, I mean, in some ways, I, I just think I've, I've tried, I've never been I've kind of always been, I've, I've at least always felt disorganized or kind of all over the place. And so I connected those two things because since I'm trying to invite more people into a sense of togetherness, I need to be like, I, I've got like a running calendar for people to be able to go to and see now so that they can be like, all right, well, I want to participate here and not here. And so I, it, it's more like that. It's more like, it's just kind of like forced me to get a few things together in order to try to facilitate these communities that I feel like I'm trying to create. Yeah, I feel like Fraction, even from a little bit of a distance, I feel like it's been such a special thing, not only for the people involved, the people that choose to follow and support you, but it, I feel like for you, I wonder if you could share a little bit of what, what that community is and maybe what has surprised you. Yeah, well, it started out as something that I was doing regular, uh, you know, kind of weekly content for just like, like any sort of like ongoing crowdfunding platform. And, and I just wasn't using Patreon at the time, or I don't know. And then I just kind of kept it in house, but, um, you know, it's just been, it's as time has gone on, it, it's kind of, it, it kind of has turned into more of a community than just a project oriented thing to be a part of and I feel very uncomfortable with charging people for proximity to Levi like that is not what I'm trying to do but I think that it could it's kind of special in the moments when I get on we use discord for the platform and I realize uh, <coughs> oh man this thing could exist if I never got back on it again like like yeah. there, there are these genuine and beautiful relationships happening uh, I don't know how familiar you are with that platform, but you can kind of create all of these different conversation channels for people to share whatever they want to share inside of them. And so we've got all kinds of fun stuff. And then we've also got some, like, I've got a mental health channel. I've got, I've got um, like a, a help channel and all of these different kinds of things where I've just seen such incredible amounts of um, both vulnerability and care toward those being vulnerable and I just, it's just, it's, it's when I see stuff like that, that I realize what's important about keep <laughs> having continued to keep on 
putting effort into this thing or like you know what i mean like you know those moments where it's like okay this is this isn't just like a need for extrinsic attention or motivation yeah. or something anymore it's like they're 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 folks who are actually loving one another really well through this and especially i think during quarantine with so because that community is full of like teenagers to 55 or 60 year olds which is also weird and wild to me but exciting and and then people who are pretty all over the spectrum when it comes to political ideology or 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 faith views or the way that they conduct themselves or live live their lives and and there's sort of I've tried to facilitate kind of like an inherent res a, a respect for one another's inherent value mm. um just regardless of of where everyone's at and I think I've seen it lived out and that's been beautiful to me yeah yeah that's awesome man I want to switch it up a little bit I feel like yeah. and I feel like this is you know we over the years we've gathered a few poet friends and you're definitely on that list and mm -hmm. and I guess this makes sense but I feel like with everyone uh that we've gotten to know Anise Mojgani mm. Sierra DeMolder Tanya Ingram you um, vulnerability stands out. Honesty yeah. stands out. And I guess it makes sense. If you're going to be a poet that lands <laughs> on our radar, there's a vulnerability that's going to come with that. And I feel like we and even I get asked a lot about, man, I want to be vulnerable. I don't know where to start or I'm, I, I want to be honest, not even limit sorry you cut out was that my fault or your fault no my screen time <laughs> alert oh, oh, po oh, popped up which yeah. is which is healthy and also just awkward so it's okay i shouldn't have used the word fault forgive me it's no one's fault yeah. no, no. <laughs> um, where i was going you know we get we kind of get asked how can i begin to be vulnerable and i don't even think it it's necessarily related to creativity it can be yeah. Um, but even just as it relates to our mental health, I wonder what what has that process been like of you choosing to share so much in such a public way? Did that get easier over time? Were you inspired by people who were honest about mm. their mental health and maybe beyond that, their lives? The first thought that comes to mind is I, I grew up in love with Bright Eyes and Connor O'Burst. And I loved the way that Connor wrote and it was it always felt so raw and so um so resonant to me. Even though I wasn't in the same places or coming from the same world, it was like there is a there is a, a not sugar coatedness to this guy's creations and I I, I love them. Uh and and so when I I don't know that it's gotten easier per se. I think that I'm I think, I mean, when it comes to hopping on things like this or doing doing shows, I mean, the stage pride is like still a very real thing for me. So when it comes down to whether or not it ever gets easier to, because there's kind of like, you can have like a, a, a sort of faux vulnerability that doesn't yeah. quite get there too, you know? And, yeah. um, and so, so when it's actually happening, you know, I heard it said that you, you know, if it doesn't scare you a little bit to put it down, you haven't found it yet. And so I kind of live by that a little bit, you know? Um, and I also am aware on the flip side of times in my life where I, I think Chad and I get into this a little bit on the upcoming To Write Love podcast, but where I have done my fair share of what Brene Brown calls spotlighting people and kind of oversharing and blinding folks with things that I probably didn't need to put out there, you know? Mm. And so, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to learn to uh, <laughs> take the bad with the good and learn from those mistakes and, and all of that. But I, I would say, air, I think air toward making the mistake, man, like air, air, toward, air toward getting it out there and not keeping it bottled up inside and 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 you never know what um what other folks will be able to resonate with that you might have to say you know yeah. what has it been like i think you maybe i think you called it faux vulnerability um mm -hmm. and i this is definitely like a question rooted in my own experience but how have you balanced kind of being perceived as an honest vulnerable person 
with having to live that out um, or maybe getting to live that out in your private life. Like you're not just your mental health as a topic in your work, mm -hmm. but your, your sincere actual mental health. Has that been a balancing act? I, I think I've, I've learned the hard way at times I can be vulnerable on a stage, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm truly not only vulnerable, but known in my life. And I wonder yeah. if you relate to some of that. I do relate to that. I mean, I, I, I was, I was going to say to my, is it chagrin? I don't know what the right word is, but to, uh, yes, it's, it's relatable. Um, it takes, I think it takes a lot more intentionality for me to be truly known by true people who are in uh, every, everyone's a true person, um, to, to be, to be known. Dude, Ben, your former housemate just vouched for you. <laughs> I don't know what he said. I don't, I didn't see it. He said you're consistent. Oh, good. Well, that's good to know. I mean, and, and it's and it is good to know that because I, I can feel I feel extremely inconsistent within myself, you know, like there, there are there are there are always these thoughts of um, kind of like an imposter syndrome kind of a thing going on where it's like, oh, man, I'm I mean, uh, an example of a way that it manifests itself in my life would be like, yeah, be honest, be honest, be honest. Oh, next time I sit down to write a new record, it's like, oh, God, I can't say that. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Oh, these, these, what do these people think if I say that? You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, and, and I think it's exacerbated by how, maybe how much you pay attention to what, the, I mean, I, it, sure. it, 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 it certainly, I, I don't ever want to be callous. Yeah. Um, but I also, have learned i mean one thing i took i took all of last year off of the road and that was really really hard for me but it it did something i think inside of me or at least pushed me in the direction of moving away from just like what had become a a really codependent relationship with mm -hmm. an audience yeah and and i'm so thankful for that maybe especially right now personally because I think if the Levi from last May would have been going into this time in our world, I, it would be, I would be, a, it would be a very different and not great story, you know? Yeah. And um, so I, I don't know. I may have, I may have strayed from your question. A little no, bit no. There, but. Okay. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit? I, I talked about, or I kind of announced that our podcast episode with you, your conversation mm -hmm. with Chad is coming next week. And, Okay. I wonder if you could give people kind of a, a sneak preview. <laughs> oh boy. Um, well, I, I believe we talked about how um, no one else can play your part. I believe that that's kind of the, the last, um, hey, there it is. There it is. Yes. That's, that's we didn't even one. plan that's, that. That's a, yeah. So that, so that's the one that's coming up and, and, you know, he kind of asked what I, what I, he, he told me that as Chad does and i believe him as i always do but it, it all there's always the insecure you know it, so he's like well how does it feel when i tell you that and i'm like well i don't know i mean i believe that when i tell other people that but when i when it comes to dealing with myself i'm i tend to be a little bit more harsh you know uh, harsh of a critic but um so we talked we talked about that we did kind of talk about some levi the poet stuff and just and just a little bit more depth about, you know, what it was like being a full-time performance artist and having to take a full year off of the road because of just extreme burnout and a yeah. lot of, um, you know, and, and I know when we've talked before too, like, you know, you've talked about hopping off of social media and all this stuff. Like sometimes I guess for me, I just have to completely disconnect, you know, yeah. and, and there was, there was some of that that needed to happen. So we talked about that. We talked about um, the inherent worth of a person, you know, and, 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 and how it's not just, he, actually this, this is, this was my biggest takeaway from the conversation. It was a word that Chad, a phrase that Chad used that I've never heard before, but I, I loved. Um, we talked about the difference. Maybe this is in the same vein as, as faux authenticity, but he, he used the phrase, um, toxic positivity mm. and that that was amazing to me like i'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that for a long time because i we were we were basically talking about like you know you're trying to be encouraging through 
the message of to write love, the message of hope, what I want to share. You're not alone. How I, but, but it is possible to, um, to really kind of diminish a person's experience and suffering and, 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 and like go so far in the direction of <laughs> all things will be made new that you almost belittle the current yeah. circumstance. And, um, and so he, he used the phrase toxic positivity. And I just thought that that was great. That is I, so, so good. So I've never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good one. I, I, I loved it. So that's, that's a bit of it. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about this, but I saw it in the comments. Would it be okay? You can say no. You can always say no. Would you want to share a short poem? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, the problem with the problem with me is I, I just don't know what kind of short poetry I, have I like that. I, I booked a poet and it didn't <laughs> cross my mind to have him share a poem. <laughs> Um, man, I, well, how, what, how much time do we have? We got a few minutes. Short? I mean, we got like four minutes, five four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. I've got, um, well, I, I should take the opportunity to say this. We've done multiple things together in conjunction with to write love on our arms. And probably the one that I would push anyone on this thread to is a poem called it's all worth living for. Mm. And that was a part of the 2018 National Suicide Prevention Day campaign, I think. Yeah. That one's way too long. So I'm not, I can't do that one right now. I want to get, we have to get the headliner on, you know? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, uh, this is just, this is the shortest poem I can think of. It's called um, Chapter One, When Hearts Are Large. And it comes off of a record uh, called Correspondence of Fiction. And it's about a boy and a girl who are in love and building a tree house together. Awesome. Um, my love, when we first set sail and pushed off to sea, I stood at the bow looking backward, dry-eyed and imagining that the world in all of its color and grandeur and majesty had been devastated by that same flood I'd seen when I told you that my father was making me leave. It was a midsummer night's eve. And in my heart, it was a romance. That same Shakespearean tragedy, that quintessential teenage flickering that let love burn brighter in the reminiscent memories as we slowly fell asleep. Cuddling beneath the stars that I wished upon through the cutout at the top of the teepee, it doubled by day as an Indian fort with girls have cooties stitched across the seams. And at night, our secret love affair that the cowboys would have deemed a crime punishable by cat gun and sour faces and wild, wild west make believe, old enough to comprehend, but young enough to dream. I can still hear the rhythm of your breathing beneath that canopy while the wind played brush on the snare and God threw his bolts of lightning like the thunder clapped clave to complement the whistling moving through the trees and remembered you promising that when we grew up, you'd build a home for me. Now to start growing and you'd curl up your fake mustache like your favorite character in your favorite movie and whisper, I'll be your huckleberry. So in the morning, when I snuck back to my room, I thought tragedy indeed that innocence, if ever it was, can be stripped away without a warning. My king, by grace or by fate or by luck or by mercy, I trust the moon will carry your letters safely to me. This flood rescinding will give way to land depending and like the hand of God gave olive leaves to encourage that ancient family, my dove. With love and sincerity and all that I have to offer. Your queen. That's the end of that poem. Dude, that's <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. You're, you are so special, man. Thank you for sharing that. I got two. One will be quicker than the other. But um, okay. first off, if someone wants to learn more, support you, follow you, what yeah. could they do? Uh, they can follow Levi the Poet 
anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> Website is, it's all with just Levi the Poet. So go searching for Levi the Poet and you'll find it. That's, okay. You'll find it all. Yeah. That was a great short answer. The yeah. second one, and I'm sure you get this, if someone is, maybe they're a young writer, a young poet, maybe they don't even think of, maybe they're not young, maybe they don't even think of themselves as a poet yet, but they're curious about writing, creating, sharing, they have no audience, no platform. I wonder what advice you might give <laughs> to someone. Uh, well, I'm glad that you used the word curious about writing or sharing because sometimes you get questions like, I want to do exactly what you do. And I, I feel like saying, I'm definitely not going to discourage you from doing that. But there's also something to counting the cost because you might very well decide this is the worst life I could have chosen <laughs> and because of all of this. I mean, and that goes for any kind of a life. Um, I mean, when I started writing things, I, I was doing open mics at a local coffee shop in Albuquerque. That seems like it's always a good foot in the door and people there are generally really encouraging. Um, I, I, I was, I loved the music scene. And so the first show I ever did was in the like kind of an indie coffee shop vibe. And uh, I yelled a lot more back then and everyone hated it so much. But there was one metal guy there and he invited me to start doing shows at metal concerts. And so all that to say, it's like, if you want to just hop up and share poems in between set lists with bands at a regular show, ask the promoter. They need something to do in the middle of the, <laughs> in the middle of the set change. You know, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's so much stuff and there's so much opportunity now put a video up and hashtag yourself, you know, like uh, you're always going to have to contend with what other people will think of the stuff that you're doing, but that is never going to go away. And, and, and probably your writing is as pure as it's ever going to be without an audience. So you may as well start there and put up the stuff that's actually you before you have to start deliberating about what's, <laughs> what is and is not appropriate to put out into the world. Yeah. I don't know. Get going, you know, ship the idea and see if you like it or not. Yeah. Oh, that's good, man. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your yeah. time. Thank you for being here. I love you, dude. And, uh, Thanks for uh, having me on. It's my absolutely. honor. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that podcast episode next week. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. All, All right. right. Thanks, Take you guys. Care, man. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. So that's Levi the Poet. You guys, please follow Levi the Poet. He's got lots online, lots that you can listen to, lots that you can watch. And we are going to bring on Allie Krieger. Let's see. Allie, are you here? There are so many requests. Wait a second. Allie, have you submitted a request? Allie, if you can ask to join don't see you yet all right hey jess will you text ally oh she's here ally will you send a request we're doing our best here people we're gonna get her on did someone say she's here she's here Jess or Mark, if you're watching and you want to let me know what's going on. Um, Allie Krieger. Oh, wait. There's hope. Yes. All right. She's coming. Hi. Hi. You're here. I'm here. I was watching previously, so I think that's why, like, the no, thing no. didn't pop up asking for a request. It's okay. I tell people, like, you know, so many people are going live, and, like, I always remind people that Miley Cyrus has been having Wi-Fi trouble. So it's like <laughs> everyone's doing their best, you know? We're fine. Then if she's having everyone's, trouble... Everyone's... Yeah, everyone's just trying to figure it out. I like your shirt. Thank you. What is... It's just what from a Pride it? campaign. It's super cool. Thank you for thank you. being here and thank you for bringing lots of friends, apparently. 
Yeah, um, I'm so glad they're here and so thankful to be with you guys right now. So thanks for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. You, we talked earlier, so I already shared this with you, but yeah, we, you know, I, I go further back with Ashlyn and Ashlyn mm -hmm. has obviously been so vocal in her support of the organization. And I feel like we forget to, we overlook <laughs> your support sometimes. And my, I'm just over here. my favorite example of that is when we saw you after a pride game, I, I don't, I guess last year, and a few of the women, <laughs> Ash, Ashlyn included, had given us, you know, um, their U.S. jerseys to raffle off, to raise yeah. money for the organization. And you just politely, quietly mentioned, you're like, hey, guys, I, I, I would have given you mine. Yeah, just like, and, let me know if and you so, need an extra. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like you, you quietly supported us. Uh, and so when it came to this, I was like, you know what? I am going to ask Allie to be on Instagram Live. Well, I appreciate you. And anytime, uh, I got you. I got your back with the jersey. So uh, thank next you. Next time. Thank you so much. Um, well, I got some, some questions for you. OK, I'm ready. Um, so I, as I started with Levi, I just love to ask kind of what this season of life has been looking like. Um, I know you've been training. So we can touch on that. But I wonder as it relates to not only being physically healthy, but mentally healthy, what mm -hmm. has, what has self-care looked like? Uh, what has getting through this strange season been like for you? Yeah, it's been, um, it's been really hard. I can't lie. I'm sure, you know, we're all kind of dealing with it in different ways. Um, at the beginning, I was very happy uh being home for at least just like a two week period i was just really happy to be in my home because we're always traveling we're living out of bags we're in hotels i mean people know um and we're rarely here and so it was really nice the first like you know couple of weeks i was like wow this is like actually so nice to like be home be with the pups be with ash and not have to like stress about you know when we're on our next flight or next camp and things like that um, we love that, but also we haven't had time at home that we could really enjoy. So at the beginning, I was like, okay, this is so nice and kind of getting in a nice routine. Um, and then I kind of hit like in like month two and like week four ish, I wasn't doing well. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, when, you know, can we get back to training? when are we going to be able to find uh, new ways to like stay fit and healthy for when we do have to get back to playing? Like, how are we, you know, we've worked so hard since December 1st um, individually and, you know, with it, with the U S team, because we hadn't start our, you know, our Orlando preseason yet, we had just been training really hard in order to get fit to prepare for preseason and our NWSL season. So it was like kind of all of a sudden just taken from us and we had to like reevaluate like where we could go train. Um, you can never replicate that at the highest level. So that was mentally tough to kind of figure out, okay, well, like this is our job uh, yeah. to stay fit and to, it's a 24 hour job. So we have to stay fit. We have to stay healthy. We have to like, you know, be ready for when we do have to go back to work. You know, I, I don't think of it as a job because I love it. Sure. So, but that I went through that mental piece of like, okay, I need a routine. I need to like step back and take a breath. I need to take care of myself uh, mentally, physically, emotionally in a way that like, I don't think I've ever had to really dig this deep before. Mm. And um, it was a struggle because we would, Ash and I, luckily we can train together because we're quarantined together. Yeah. So we would go out to the park and or a field like random field and be able to train with each other pass the ball back and forth which was nice but you can only do that for so long until you start like i literally one day she was she asked me after i had like missed like three passes in a row to to her she was like are you good like do you want to go home like my attitude was so poor and i felt bad and i was like listen like i'm not okay yeah. Like, I'm not having fun. I don't know when we're going to get back on the field. I don't know if we're ever going to play again. I don't yeah. know when things are going to be back to, not normal, but just, like, normal for uh, for us sure. in the sense of seeing people and going to the store without having to wear a mask or gloves or, you know, like, I just, yeah. 
it's been like an up and down roller coaster, but I then started to get into this routine. And I feel like it's so much healthier to be able to be in a routine and plan your day, you know, the night before, like, okay, tomorrow we're going to do this, this, and this, and we're going to like look forward to doing stuff, which now I think has been so much healthier for me mentally because yeah. we like now have stuff on the schedule. Um, whether it's Insta lives like with you or, um, you know, with friends, Zoom calls with friends, yeah. we have meetings. So we kind of like plan our day around that type of stuff and make sure we're connecting in a way of like just having good communication yeah. and understanding each other's feelings because we both obviously are two different people and we deal with things differently. So, yeah, it's been up and down. Um, but I'd say this week has been a good week. Yeah. So. You touched on Ashlyn was there for you when your attitude was poor. Oh for, my God. for people who follow you guys, um, yeah. they they may have seen that this has this training has not been super fun all the time for Ashlyn. Oh man! So I, um, I know we I know it's easy to joke about, but what has it been like? Like I know you're training individually, but with the pride. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah. So, so we that, have like different quadrants on the yeah. field that we can train in. But luckily, Ash and I are able to be, you know, in the same quadrant or the same half of yeah. the field because has it has together. that been way better? Is it still frustrating? What's that been like? It's, it's really frustrating for Ash. I don't mean to laugh, but I love her videos because that's her and that's how raw and honest she is, and everyone can see that. And she's just so motivated to want to be the best. And you see that in the videos, like if something goes wrong, she's just like, I need to be better and I need to clean this up. And, but like, we're all, even when we're in the middle of like a worldwide pandemic and worldwide crisis, like, you know, we're still trying to get better, yeah. at, you know, our job. And I think it's just providing us with a little comedy relief, I think for everyone as well, um, because we all go through it and we're all in this together and we're yeah. all, you know, even if it's struggling, we're struggling together and we're supporting each other. So that's kind of like what it's been like. And we're doing the best we can. We're individually working our butts off on the field yeah. to, you know, be ready for whenever we're going to get back out there together. And I know hopefully next week we're somewhat focusing on getting into phase two, which is like mm. small group training. So if that goes well, you know, we'll hopefully continue to move down the road. But um, yeah, it's been really enjoyable to train with her and, and you know, see Wait, that exciting. You, you <laughs> told me earlier, moments. you're the only one who's allowed to kick the ball to her, right? Yeah, because, you know, we were quarantined together. So luckily, we we're able to pass back and forth. But people who, you know, aren't quarantined together, like three of our other teammates are able to train together because they're quarantined together in the same apartment. So like, they're lucky because they can like train together. Well, some people are just out there individually like yeah. doing their thing and it's tough you know it's really hard yeah. to stay well, motivated that way you were saying like you have other work to do you can't just be like trying to score goals <laughs> right. <laughs> right i'm like ash like i can throw you as many balls like i can like you know do your handling i don't even know what it's called but we can like <laughs> I can, like toss you the balls and like you can go for them but like i also need to like do my training yeah. so it's like a it's a good balance though because she hasn't been able to use her hands too much sorry in the past like two weeks yeah. just because of her hand injury but oh, obviously sure, sure. getting back she's able to use it now so like we're kind of in our own little quadrant yeah, yeah. um kind of a different different uh subject but maybe relates um obviously like we've been isolated or more isolated i know you've been with ashlyn um, yeah. But what has it been like uh, connecting with family, friends, now teammates? Um, has that been a process? Have, has, has that been something that you've really been leaning into and appreciating? Or what has that mm -hmm. looked like for you? Honestly, like I... I think I've talked to my friends um, so much more now that we've been quarantined than I ever have before. And like, we've connected in a way that I've missed so much. And I feel so grateful and thankful that I'm able to do that now. So I feel like, you know, amongst how frustrating and crazy this has been the past few months, I've reconnected with my friends and family like I've never had before. And I've never felt as close. And so I'm really grateful for that. And that's something that's so positive coming out of this experience. Um, 
And every Thursday night, we have a happy hour at 7 p.m. on a Zoom call with my friends from home um, and their partners um, or wives. So it's really enjoyable. We just kind of like are able to like let loose and like, you know, catch up with everyone, make sure everyone's doing okay. And just whether it's good or bad, just kind of talk everything out and have a few laughs and pretend like we're, you know, at our normal happy hour at home. Yeah. So it's been great. And like Ash will pop in and say hi uh, at times. So it's really, really good. And I think that's something that I can say is so positive about yeah. right now. Have you, are you going to keep going live with Heather O'Reilly? Yeah, we're trying to do like bi-weekly because we're just so like, literally, I feel like I'm not busy, but I'm busy. Yeah. Um, and so is she. And she's, you know, obviously... Um, do soon, I think, um, with her baby boy, which is so exciting. So I think we're gonna have to like, yeah. you know, figure that out. But um, I am, yeah, we love it because it's just like a good time to catch up and kind of take your mind away from normal day to day things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things when we had Ashlyn on, I guess about a month ago, it was really cool to ask her about your wedding and yeah. to kind of hear her reflect and so I wanted to do that with you I I part of why I love it is I got to experience it I got to yes. be there and it was just magical and amazing and I don't know how anything will compare to it but I wonder I as the you know months have gone by um just what what does it feel like now what stands out about that night for you um I think what stands out is walking up those stairs at the ceremony for the first time and seeing all of our closest friends and family that mean the world to us that, you know, because it was such an intimate moment that we, you know, had invited just like the people in our lives that really mean, mean the absolute most to us and um, who we have such great connections with. And I feel like that just took my breath away because everyone is in one place for you and they want to support you and they're showing their love and they're showing that they care about you and obviously ash and and you know whoever your uh partner is or spouse is at the at, at that moment so it's 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 such a joy, a joyful experience walking up there and, and, you know, we kind of made our entrance and just seeing everyone's faces. Um, that to me was something that I will never forget. And it's such a good feeling to this day because everyone's there one time in your life, really just for you to celebrate your love and your commitment to each other. And that's something that has been really, um, incredible like such a happy feeling for me and, yeah. and probably the best memory that i have ashlyn shared she said a word that i it surprised me but i it, it was also really powerful but she used a bunch of words that she felt like um people got to show up and recognize and share and one of those was pain yeah and i feel like you don't you wouldn't often equate that or imagine that you wouldn't imagine a wedding right uh, being the right setting for that but it was right. so real and raw and beautiful and i think about your brother's speech and yeah your dad throwing his cane <laughs> on the dance floor oh. yeah and i wonder if you could could talk a little bit about what it meant even for you with your family yeah it meant so much that both of my parents were able to be there obviously i know you know people uh, remember my dad having that bad accident in August. And so something that really um, was meaningful for me is that he was actually able to be present because we weren't sure if he'd be able to make it there. So that was something that was so, um, so great for me to have him, you know, have his support and um, my mom there at the same time. They've obviously been, you know, divorced for quite some time, but to have them stand next to each other and walk with each other down the aisle was really um, something that I had hoped for and that had happened. And that was just so refreshing for me. And it just made everything kind of go at ease. 
Um, I feel like we've come a long way as a family and um, that was just so nice to share with them that experience and how happy they seemed in that moment as well. So I was so lucky my dad was there. He, all he cared about was the first dance. You know, so like he was like, when, when is our father daughter dance? Like, when do I have to be ready? You know, so he was just like, so nervous about that. And I was like, dad, just yeah. like, relax. It's coming. It's coming. Like, I gotta like figure out a couple other things that we had, you know, set up before that time. Yeah, yeah. So he gets up, you know, and he throws his cane and he like gets on the dance floor. And like, it was just a really special moment. And then Ash and her father, Mike, you know, got on the, the opposite end of the dance floor. So it was really special for both of us to have that moment. Um, a bit yeah. traditional, but um, we wanted to share that with them. So yeah, it was just um, such an amazing celebration of hope, happiness, also pain and that it's okay to have these struggles throughout your life, but then you have beautiful, happy endings um, and that uh, it's okay to not be okay all the time, but with the love and support of your friends and family um, and for yourself, you can accomplish beautiful things. Yeah. Um, I know we could probably talk for two yeah. hours about your brother. Oh and my I know gosh, for me, I, I mean, know. I feel like his speech that night is one of it, it's like one of the best things I've ever experienced in my life, you know? Yeah, it was and, um, and, and it was so raw and so real. And um, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about maybe that, like for you hearing, watching and hearing him speak and, and just your yeah. relationship. Yeah, I love my brother so much. We've been through so much together, um, even growing up that a lot of people don't know. And um, that's what has brought us so close over the years. Of course, when we were younger, we'd have our fights and, you know, things like that. But, um, you know, getting to like have an experience of when your parents get divorced, you come together. I'm so glad that that's the direction yeah. that we took because you can easily, you know, separate and just go um, kind of like your own ways and, and kind of create your own path, but we created a path together and we shared our struggle with each other and our pain with each other through that time. So I think that had just gave us a beautiful foundation um, to have a strong relationship, a brother sister relationship. And I lean on him for, I mean, I lean on him for almost everything. <laughs> um, you know, he's one of my first phone calls uh, after Ash. So uh, we both do. So it's it's nice to have him in my corner constantly and supporting us and supporting me. And he's been there since day one. Um, when my, uh, yeah, when maybe some of my family members weren't. So it's a great relationship that we have. And for ha to have him speak at the wedding and kind of share his like personal stories along with, you know, uh, me and Ash and how he like met her and then saw this whole relationship develop. That's something that um, was really nice to hear and to have him say that I was like in tears the whole time. But um, because we've been through a lot and not many people know exactly um, how deep it is, it's just refreshing to see how well-spoken and how he could like, articulate our emotions so deeply and so well and yeah. in a funny way too and you could just see how nervous he was but he was so excited to bring everyone in that room no matter where we all came from in our experiences and everyone felt like they were one and and yeah I just thought that was really cool that he just had this aura about him that that brought everyone together and that yeah. he wanted to just speak about happiness and hope mm. and life. And that was really cool. Oh, it, no, it was like, I, I was like getting choked up just remembering cause it was so yeah. special. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I know it's been a big transition. Um, I know for years publicly, people wondered if you guys were together right? You and Ash. Yeah. And, and now mm -hmm. it's very clear that you guys are together. Uh, yeah. You got married and there was so, you know, Surprise. a video and photos and so much press. Yeah. And I wonder what has, and I know your attention isn't new for you. Like you've com mm -hmm. competed at the highest level for years, but I wonder what has taking that on. Um, so not just taking on attention for soccer, but choosing to share your relationship in such a public way 
and I know it just seems like every every few days there's like a new huge story yeah. um, about you guys. And I wonder what has that been like? Has it been awesome? Has it been hard? It's been awesome and hard. Obviously, I'm somewhat of a private person. I don't think you would realize that it's like now you see us like shouting from the rooftops and which is also so exciting and great. And I want people to feel the love that we have and um, feel feel safe and um, and happy uh, with us sharing our life. And um, but I'm also like so, somewhat of a private person. So that was really hard for me. And that's why I feel like um, not that I was hiding our relationship, but just I don't know if that was like I was ready to open up and be vulnerable to that many people. So it was kind of that decision that was holding me back um, because I do at the end of the day, just want to share um, my relationship and private life with Ash and my family. And so it's really hard to kind of be that open person all of a sudden and be out in this yeah. public as a public figure and, you know, just share everything and like, people know like when I'm going to the bathroom, it's like, you know, it's like I wasn't ready yeah. for that really. Um, so I needed to just kind of take some time to think about how we were going to do this. And now I am so grateful and thankful because I'm, you know, getting messages from so many fans and supporters that they say like, listen, you're saving my life. And um, I'm so inspired by you guys um, just being authentically yourselves and living your life and, the, the way that you're living it and sharing it with the world. And, you know, I just think this was normal all along to, you know, be in, in a same sex relationship and just be with a person that you absolutely love and adore. And, you know, she's my best friend and my partner in life and my wife now. And it's just something that I never really thought was like not normal. If I can, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. So, Sure. It was made, it was more new to me to share my life, no matter who I'm with, rather than actually yeah. share it just with her. So does, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. But sure. now we're so grateful and happy and thankful because we're saving people's lives, honestly. And yeah. we get messages like that. And it brings me to be just so emotional, but like happy because if I can do that, like I'm willing to share everything. Yeah. And I feel like I think that was something Kyle said in his speech that night that you guys were going to do that. Like, yeah. I remember you had um, the names of LGBT trailblazers at each table. Right. Yeah. That was and so I, cool. I feel like it was someone, Megan or Kyle, that that kind of said, like, you guys, you guys are going to be like these people and you're going to yeah. make it easier for other people. Yeah. And, and that's something that that's so comforting to for us. You know, because we're just being ourselves, yeah. you know, and I, I feel like this is just me and this is, you know, my life. And if that can help other people just be just as comfortable and confident in their life and, and enjoyment. And I mean, everyone deserves happiness. So I think yeah. if we can share that and spread that around, it's been, in, yeah, it would be incredible. Um, do you, do you, can we keep you for a few more minutes? Is that okay? I can do a few questions. Oh, you froze for, okay. Can Over we, here. do you mind if we end this one and jump right? Yes. Oh, do you mind if we end this and start right back over? Sure. Okay, so you guys, we're gonna end okay. this and jump right back on. Okay. All right, sorry you guys, that, that took a minute. Thank you for coming back. I'm gonna bring Ali back on. Okay. Boom. Hi. Hi. We did it. Yeah. Um, thank you for, thanks for coming back. Yeah, of course. Um, you guys, the only bummer is we lost all your questions. <laughs> oh, so, gosh. So if you don't mind resubmitting your questions, we'll, we'll definitely get to a few of those. Uh, again, there's a question mark icon at the bottom of your screen. 
Um, Ali, I thought about one other question I wanted to ask before we get to questions from these folks. I feel like so many people loved the story of your comeback with the national team mm -hmm. of being away from the US team that that so many people felt you belonged with all along. And it was two years, right? Um, so two years goes by and then and then suddenly you're back. Um, and I feel like, especially for people who are fans of you and, and for me as a, a friend as well, like I, I was so excited and happy for you. And I wonder kind of as it relates to mental health and identity, I wonder what, what that time away was like and if, had you never gotten the call back, if you, if you feel like you could have had peace I know that's we could probably talk for an hour but just I wonder yeah. I feel like so many people can relate to lo having a dream losing a dream something ending prematurely um and I just wonder if there's anything you'd want to share from from that time if hopefully that makes sense yeah um complete sense I think I really struggled through that time I don't you know being fired from my job and you know not really given a reason why it was really difficult to like I have that separate um, but understood that you know what this is me and I'm going to be the alley no matter you know if I'm oh sorry oh. I think we might be I think it might be I think it might be frozen can you guys hear her Um, I know, sure. Ali, I can't hear you. People are, oh. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I, okay, I can see you and hear you now. People are blaming Orlando okay. Wi-Fi. I mean, it probably is. I didn't. Because every time I get on Instagram Live, it's so poor. Maybe it's just my house. <laughs> um, Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I just really quick, no. like, I really struggled through that time. And I, you know, I had to figure out what else I wanted to do and things that I was actually really excited about, and really passionate about, I was able to then finally do, because, you know, my life kind of took a turn, and or my career took a turn. But that didn't stop me from being the same ally that was always there. Um, I was like, you know what, like, if I want to be in the World Cup, I'm going to work my butt off. Um, to be back and I'm going to be that same alley for my club team as I am for the national team. There's no difference. So I'm going to work just as hard um, and I'm going to be ready. So, you know, if they need me, then I'm going to show up and I'm going to do my thing. And, but I, I did go through a really dark time, but it also led me into other things that I've wanted to accomplish and were really passionate about was getting my coaching license or opening up AKFC with my camps and clinics and yeah. doing other things that I hadn't been able to do in 10 years. So it was nice actually to kind of shift that attitude into more of a positive experience and, yeah. and continue to just be me and work hard and hope for the best. That's so good. All right, so we'll, we'll do a couple questions. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you for your questions. Um, this is a good one. This is the first one I saw. Do you ever feel pressure advocating? Um, well, I thrive under pressure, no matter if it's advocated or not. I feel, um, I feel very good and that. Yeah, I, I feel as like a public figure, it's really, um, it's kind of like having our brands, it's really well thought out and it's intentional. So mm -hmm. I feel like each of us are really fighting for um, issues that we really believe in and fighting for people that we, that don't look like us. Um, and I think that's really important to continue to advocate for those who don't have a platform and can't speak up. So I think it's, yeah, there's a little bit of pressure, but it's something that I enjoy doing and that I feel like we all thrive in. And I think I want to continue to use my voice and use my platform for good and um, to speak for those who don't necessarily have that same platform and voice. So. No, that. That's so good. I'm I'm digging through. There's so many good questions. Um, who who are some of your heroes? Oh, um, 
I would say, I would say my brother is one of my heroes because he's just been through so many struggles in his life and has continued to succeed and come out on top and to look uh, at life in such a different perspective than I do. And it's really helped like me figure out what I want to do in my life. So I think he's my ultimate hero. Yeah, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. um, a few people asked, um, and I think whether it's up to you what you share, but just what coming out was like for you. Yeah, it was um, exhilarating. It was nerve wracking. It was, um, I had this feeling of just like being unsure. Um, but I know that Ash and I, I guess it's this. I mean, I never was really hiding from my friends and family for a long time ever since Ash and I had been together. So I guess it was like a slow coming out story. Um, but mm. publicly, I think when we announced that we were engaged was something that was both like, okay, we have to look at this now as like we're coming out together, but we're also coming out as individuals. So, you know, it was like a big deal. And I think that was really exciting for us because it was kind of like we felt so free and just so honest and it was really raw and it was us and I think it was perfect timing. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, us just being ourselves and living our life and just sharing it with the world was so freeing. Like we could give everything we have now to everyone in our lives, our friends, our family, our teammates, our um, bosses, um, our coworkers, like just now we just feel like this is me and this is what you get is, is yeah. What you see is what you get basically. So yeah. that was really freeing. There were a bunch of forms of that question. So I know that's one that really resonates with people. I wonder if someone is, they're not sure if they can come out, if they're not sure if they can share that part of who they are, if they can be honest, um, they're afraid of the response they might be met with. I wonder what advice you might have for someone in that place. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it was really difficult for me. I feel like you have to do um, what's right for you and what you feel in your heart. Um, don't feel pressure from anyone else to do anything. Um, and I feel like you have to surround yourself with people who are going to support you. And knowing that all of my friends and family and teammates like had supported us, um, especially Ashlyn's family, I think that was more encouraging for us because we knew that they had our back and they, they were always going to be there no matter what. Um, and I think that's something that's really nice for us because, you know, if, and also like we actually didn't really care what other people thought of the yeah. family. I mean, I, I, I don't really care about what a lot of people think yeah. um, of how I live my life because that's just us and, and, you know, to each their own, right. People can sure. choose how to live their life the way they want. So I guess I would just say, do what you feel is best and also just have that support system around you. Um, and if you don't, then um, find people who are like-minded and who live their life similar as, as we do and just find that support system. I think that's really key. That's so good. I like this one. Describe Ashlyn in three words. Oh, gosh. Okay. Beautiful, uh, particular, and I would say really funny. Yes. She's very honest, too. I'm oh, yeah. A, that's a good one. That's giving a you good a four. One. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. Very honest and raw. Yeah. All right. Maybe one more. Is that cool? Yeah. One more. I'm good. Okay. You guys, there's so many good questions, so thank you. <laughs> we'll have to do this again. Oh, I would love that. How, How important was mental with... health to deal with? The... Oh my gosh, that was the hardest thing. Um, For so... people who don't know, will you talk about that injury as well? Yeah, so I, I got injured. Um, I was coming off of the 2011 World Cup, um, played every minute of every game, into our Olympic qualifying tournament in, in January that year, in 2012. Um, we were beating this team 7 nothing, And uh, right before the second half, which I think I was going to come out a couple minutes um, before that, and right as 
I, I shot the ball and unfortunately I just got tackled and one of the opponents kicked my knee in. And so I tore my ACL meniscus uh, and MCL at the time. And I immediately was just so unsure of the future and so unsure of my career and just really, really upset, but obviously try to see the good in everything and understood, okay, you know, this isn't, this isn't my time, but I will be back. And I just had to kind of go through this process mentally of like, all right, I need to do everything I can now to get back to the game that I love and to get back on my feet uh, first and foremost. And, and then we just take one day at a time. At that time I felt like, all right, uh, I'm just going to do one thing every single day. That's going to make me better um, both as a person and in order to get back out on the field. So I try to then take the negative and think and turn it into a positive um, and really focus on my recovery. Cause I had to plan out, I, you know, if I wanted to get back or not, and if I wanted to play at the highest level again, it was going to take like a nine to five job in the re rehab center that I had to go to. So I went back to Germany at the times I was still playing there. And I went to this rehab facility from nine to five every single day. And I had two sessions. And so it was like hardcore, but it was mentally draining because I wasn't around the team that much. Um, I was, you know, this was my new job to, for myself to get back uh, to be with the team. So it was, you know, and I was pretty much isolated because none of my friends from home were there. Obviously I'm overseas. I'm in this new place. Uh, not new. I'd been there for five years, but you know what I mean? Like I didn't really have my family or friends around. So it was really difficult anyway, mentally, um, because physically I could do, I could run all day, you know, um, emotionally and mentally it took a toll and you go to this deep, dark place of having bad days and then you have good days. And then, um, one thing that was really crucial during that time was just taking one day at a time and focusing on what you could control. And that was my attitude and my work ethic. And that's really what got me back. And I didn't put like an end date on anything. I didn't stress myself on that. I was like, listen, I'm going to do this the way that I need to do it and the way my body's going to do it because everyone's different and everyone handles injury different. So there wasn't really an end date, um, but I ended up missing the Olympics and I was just devastated um, because they won the gold medal that year. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I missed out on that. And that's why, you know, I'm pushing to get a medal at the Olympics. And now obviously the virus hit and it's extended for next summer. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. So I am hanging on you guys. I'm hanging on the best yeah. I can. But yeah, it was a tough experience. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. We Someone popped up, someone made an entrance and I don't know if you've seen the comments, but your, no, brother, is, Kyle? your brother is here oh, God. and he asked Hi, how long- Hi, I love you. He asked, how long is this story? <laughs> of course. I take that back then, what and, I just said. And he said so. he can't go live with you until you get your Wi-Fi fixed. Oh, my God. He's in Grandma Krieger. <laughs> He's like, you're going to be out there running with a cane. And, like, people are going to be like, what are you doing? Well, you know what? You youngins, you better watch out. Yes. Oh, I, I love yeah. your... I love that. I'm so glad he's here. You should do a live with him. Oh, I'm putting I would, him on the spot. I'm all for it. Yes. I met. Well, I told you I met your brother randomly at the Orlando airport, and it made yeah. me so happy. And then I got to, I got to meet him again. I maybe at a game once or twice, but then at uh, obviously at the wedding, and it was awesome. Yeah, he's incredible. So yeah. I'm sure everyone would love him here. Kyle, you have to watch this back because we've been singing your praises. Yeah, so you know what? Take that, take those comments back. Yeah, you got to be nice. Well, Ali, I want to let you go, but thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for for being here. Thank you for being so honest. And um, yeah, just thank you for sharing so much of your life and so much of your story. Um, thank you for not only supporting Ashlyn as she supports to write love, but but thank yeah. you for your support as well. Yes, I love you guys. And thank oh. you for being such a wonderful friend to us and so supportive of us and um, and also of us playing soccer, not just as friends, but um, oh, as athletes. It's amazing seeing you in the stands every single home game. It just means the world to us. So thank oh, you. We, 
No, we love going and I love bringing my family, my nephews. So it's, it's yeah. an honor. Um, will you stay safe and healthy and enjoy the rest of your day? Say hello to Ashlyn for us as well. I will. I will. Thanks, Jamie. All right. Bye, Thanks, guys. Allie. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. So that was Allie Krieger. So grateful to her for joining us, uh, for, for staying on longer than expected. Hello to Kyle Krieger. I'd love to have Kyle on. I'm a fan. Anything Kyle does or wants to do ever, I'm, I'm into it. Um, well, yeah, thank you to Levi the Poet and Ali Krieger. And uh, just want to remind you, the next Twiloha at Home will be Tuesday, the 26th, I believe. Chad Moses from our team will be hosting. He'll be talking to Justin from Blue October. And then I will be uh, doing two different live conversations, one with The Mighty on Facebook Live, 4 p.m. Eastern next Wednesday, and then on Skull Candy on their Instagram at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will be hosting a conversation with another nonprofit founder, Jeremy Jones um, from Protect Our Winters, and uh, was really honored and excited when Skull Candy invited me to do that. We're going to keep showing up. We're going to keep doing these. We're going to keep having conversations, doing our best to encourage you, doing our best to uh, create a space where people can feel less alone. And so thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for listening, watching. Thank you for your questions. Thank you to everyone who participated in our Run For It 5K. More than 4,000 people, all 50 states, 17 countries, more than $100,000 raised. So we are grateful. And uh, yeah, it was just amazing. We could not have dreamed up such a thing. So on behalf of our team, thank you guys again. There's a new podcast episode with Renee Yoey that is out this week. Next week, we will have the podcast episode with Levi the Poet, his conversation with Chad. That comes out on Tuesday. I think that is everything. You guys, we're gonna get through this time one day at a time. Please stay healthy, please stay safe, take care of each other, and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you so much, bye.